So strong acids completely fall apart because the bond between the H plus and the conjugate base is weak. But weak acids don't fall apart because H plus and A minus are stuck together really tight. This is a very strong bond. So they're stuck together. If they're really tightly stuck together, the H plus doesn't come off. If the H plus doesn't come off, then it's not really an acid. So when the H plus comes off really easily, then that's a strong acid. And it comes off really easily because it's a weak bond. But weak acids, the H plus barely comes off at all because this is a really strong bond. So we can see that, um, in general, the stronger an acid is at donating H, the weaker the base is at accepting H. So if I have a really, really strong acid, I have a really, really weak conjugate base. And if I have a really, really weak acid, then it has a very, very strong conjugate base. So they, again, they have this kind of complementary relationship, where if I look at HF, HF is a weak acid, right? But F minus, therefore, is a strong base. If this is, if the acid part is weak, then the conjugate base is strong, strong base. And vice versa. If the acid is really strong, then the conjugate base is very a very, very weak base. Also, we can say that higher oxidation number equals stronger oxy acid. So if I have four oxygens on a sulfur, that's a stronger acid than if I have three oxygens on a sulfur. If I have three oxygens on a nitrogen, that's a stronger acid than if I have two oxygens on a nitrogen. More oxygens equals stronger acid. And um, substances that have a positive charge are always more acidic than neutral. And neutral compounds are always more acidic than negative compounds. So H3O is the most acidic, has a positive charge. H2O is neutral, it's a little less acidic. OH minus with a negative charge is the least acidic of all. So positive charges mean you're a strong acid. Neutral means you're all right. Negative charge means you're a really weak acid. And the opposite is true of bases. A negative charge means you're a really strong base. A positive charge means you're a really weak base. So you can see there's this yin and yang kind of complementary complementarity to acids and bases. So strong bases go in water, just like an ionic compound. And an ionic compound, if it's soluble, soluble ionic compounds dissolve in water and break apart completely. Just like a strong acid makes 100% H+, a strong base makes 100% OH-. By a different mechanism, though, remember, because H+, H plus ionizing in water is a chemical reaction. NaO, NaOH dissociating in water is a physical process. It's just dissolving. And when I put a weak base into water, a weak base only makes a little bit of OH. Right? A strong base makes 100% OH minus. A weak base makes less, 5% OH minus, something le much less than 100%. And so a weak base is generally one that does not contain OH. If a base has OH in it, it's almost always a strong base. If a base doesn't have OH in it, it's usually going to be a weak base. Like NH3 does not have OH in it. So when NH3 goes into water, it can make OH, but it only makes a little bit of OH. Most of the NH3 molecules in water are still NH3. They don't react. So that's the sign of a weak base. So we can calculate how strong an acid or a base is by looking at this equilibrium constant. And so it's just like it was in chapter 13. We're going to do the same ice tables. We're going to look at make solve for x the same way. Sometimes we need a quadratic. Sometimes we don't. So it's going to be just like chapter 13. So the only difference is that now KEQ has lots of different names. 
we, we saw Kc, but we know that Kc was for concentrations, and it was also called Keq, depending on what we were talking about. And Keq is also equal to what we just saw Kw, right? Which is just the equilibrium concentration or the equilibrium constant expression for water. Well, that is very similar to Kb, and that is very similar to Ka, and that is very similar to Kp, which is when they we're talking about equilibrium expression with pressure. The point is. K has little letters next to it all the time to tell us what equilibrium we're talking about. Are we talking about an equilibrium with concentrations? Are we talking about the equilibrium of water auto-ionization? Are we talking about the equilibrium of bases? Are we talking about the equilibrium of acids? We're we talking about the equilibrium of gases and we're looking at their pressures. But K is always the same. K equals, it always equals products over reactants doesn't matter what the little letter is after the K, it always, we always form it the same way. We always form K by putting aqueous and gaseous products over aqueous and gaseous reactants. We leave solids and liquids out and we raise them to their stoichiometric coefficient. So don't, don't get uh, worried or don't get confused by all the different letters. We're going to now talk about the base ionization constant, but it's just K. It's the same K we've been looking at all along. It's products over reactants. Here's my reaction. OH minus times uh, the conjugate acid. It's kind of represented in a strange way here, H base plus. But product, this product times this product, divided by this reactant times this reactant. But oh wait, this reactant is pure a pure liquid, so it gets left out of the reaction. It gets left out of the expression. So this K is just the same as it was in the last chapter. It's just the K when we're talking about bases. And here's the K when we're talking about acids. Ka. So here's an acid, uh, an acid equation. An acid plus water makes H3O plus plus A minus. So what does K look like? This times this. H3O plus times A, divided by this times this. But oh wait, this is a pure liquid, so this doesn't figure into the equation. So it's just this times this divided by this. And we call it Ka, because we're talking about acids. But we could just as easily call it K, and it would be the same thing, and don't even worry about the little A. So um, when we're talking about weak bases, we uh, come across nitrogen a, a lot because nitrogen has that lone pair. We saw that with ammonia. This is NH3. This is N. These are H's. This is a carbon. So methylamine is NH2CH3. Uh, here's pyridine. These are all carbons. Carbon, 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 hydrogens. There's nitrogen. And so nitrogen always has a lone pair. And that nitrogen with that lone pair, this is the base. A lone pair is a base. So these um, compounds with a nitrogen in them are called amines. So um, anytime we have a nitrogen with a lone pair connected to something, here's three H's or a carbon or even in this molecule here, these are amines. Methyl amine, pyridine, um, usually have an I-N-E ending. And these are bases, generally weak bases. In this video, I'm going to cover how to calculate the pH of a solution of weak or strong acids or bases. So the first thing that we have to do is determine if the solution that we're looking at is acidic or basic. 
So to do that, we have to look at the compound that's in the solution to determine if it's an acid or base. Then the second thing we have to do before we start our pH calculation is determine if that acid or base is weak or strong. So remember, how do we identify acids or bases? Um, acids generally have an H in the front of the formula. Not always, but almost always. Um, sometimes when they don't have an H in the front, sometimes they'll have a COOH somewhere in the formula. And the H that's here at the end, that's actually the acidic H in those compounds, those carboxylic acids. That H does not go in the front. In these compounds, it goes at the end, COOH. Um, how do we identify a base? Well, first of all, bases don't have an H in the front. So if you see a compound that doesn't have an H in the front, then you should be thinking that's probably not an acid, so maybe it's a base. Um, sometimes they have OH in the formula, like uh, sodium hydroxide. Uh, sometimes they have a metal in the front. So um, bases always have an atom with a lone pair. Uh, sometimes they have OH, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have a metal in the front, sometimes they don't. So let's look at some examples of acids and bases and try to identify, see how we identify these compounds. OK, so here I have a list of compounds down below. And I'm supposed to determine whether they're strong, weak, acids, or bases, or other. So before we determine if they're strong or weak, let's just put them into acid and base category. So this is an acid. This is an acid. They're acids because they have H in the front, right? Have any other with H? Here's an acid, H in the front. Here's an acid, H in the front. Mm, those are all the ones that have H's in the front. Are those all the acids? Well, this one has H's, but not in front. This one has H's. Oh, this one has COOH. Look, there's a carboxylic acid, so this one is also an acid. All right, uh, OH, that's not an acid, that's a base. H is here, but it's not COOH, no H in front, no H in front. Okay, these are not acids, just these, so I have five acids. Let's look at the rest now. KOH, this one's easy. We know this is a base, I'm going to put it over here. I know it's a base because it has OH in the formula. This one starts with a metal, K. Um, here's another one with OH. OH in the formula, a metal. So this is definitely a base, too. Those ones are the easy ones. All right, now I've got these three left. This one starts with a metal. So maybe this one's a base. Uh, these don't start with a metal. This one starts with nitrogen. This one starts with carbon. Um, and there's no OH. So these ones are difficult to tell. What are these? Well, the um, Generally, in order for something to be a base, an atom has to have a lone pair of electrons and be somewhat electronegative. So um, oxygen atoms are generally good bases. We know that water is an example of a base, right? So um, water, H2O, the oxygen atom has a pair, uh, two lone pairs of electrons, and those electrons can be basic when they accept a proton. Well, nitrogen is another atom, not quite as electronegative as oxygen, but nitrogen is also basic. So because nitrogen is basic, these are called amines, and there's a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, which makes these bases. So even though they don't have OH in them, and even though they don't have uh, a metal in front, because they have a nitrogen atom in them, that nitrogen atom makes these basic. So we'll put those over here with nitrogen. So back to this guy. Metal in front, no OH, no nitrogen. So what's this one? This is just salt, right, NaCl. Is salt an acid or a base? It's actually neither. It's not an acid or a base. And we'll talk about why um, in a later video. But sometimes we can identify certain um, anions, like Cl minus. We can say that that is not going to be acidic or basic. And we'll talk about why in another video. This is just called a salt. So some things are neither acids or bases. They're neutral. They're called salts. So salt is, maybe not surprisingly, a salt, not an acid or a base. All right, so now we've got these grouped into strong acid and strong base. But they're not all strong acids, and those are not all strong bases. So how do we tell them apart? Well, remember, there are six strong acids, HCl, HBr, HI, 
HNO3, H2SO4, and HClO4. So HF is not one of those. This acetic acid is not one of those. H2CO3 is not one of those. HI is a strong acid. It's one of those six. HNO3 is a strong acid. It's one of those six. So here's my strong acids. Therefore, all the rest are weak. Now let's do strong base and weak base. A strong base is anything that has OH in it. And a weak base is anything that does not have a metal and it does not have OH. So these have metals and have OH. Those are strong bases. These do not have metals or OH. Those are weak bases. All right, so here's, this would be how we would separate these, acids and bases. So when we're trying to determine the pH of a solution, we first have to determine, is that acidic or basic? And the reason we have to do that is, will we calculate concentration of H3O plus or will we concentrate will we calculate the concentration of OH minus we'll calculate this if it's an acid and we'll calculate this if it's a base so we have to know if we're dealing with an acid or a base so that we know whether we're calculating this or we're calculating this all right is it weak or strong well we just kind of went over that too um, to determine if, if acids are weak or strong, strong acids, we would just look at our, our six acids, right? There are six of them that are strong. Memorize these. This is the easiest way to tell strong and weak acids apart. Strong, HCl, HBr, HI. These three only have two elements, and th those three elements are all halogens, Cl, Br, and I. So those three are fairly easy to remember. But sometimes you get confused because HF seems like it should go right up on top because the halogens go F, C, L, B, R, I, right? But HF is not a strong acid. HCl, HBr, and HIR, HF is not. So these three are strong and they're pretty easy to remember. The other three have more than two elements. They're oxy acids, so HNO3, H2SO4, and HClO4. So oxy acids because they have oxygen in addition to two other elements. So these are the six strong acids. That's it. So determine if an acid is strong or weak. I just remember that I, these six, and if it's not one of those, it must be weak. And to determine if a base is weak or strong, strong equals metal OH. OH. Anytime I have a metal and an OH, sodium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, any hydroxide is a strong base. And weak bases are neutral, which means they're not ionic, so we could say covalent. And um, sometimes they have nitrogen. All right, so let's calculate some pH. All right, here's the first one. What is the pH of a 2.3 molar solution of HClO4? So let's remind ourselves. That first we have to answer is it acid or base? And second, is it strong or weak? Alright, so um, acid or base? Acid, because it has an H in front. Strong or weak? HClO4, is that one of our six strong acids? Yes, it is. Strong acid. All right, so now we can actually start calculating pH. Okay, so since we're working with an acid, I know that I'm trying to calculate the pH. If I were working with a base, I would try to calculate the pOH, since I, it would be easier to find the concentration of OH minus. So I'm looking for the concentration of H3O plus. 
And once I have this, I can plug it into this equation and then I'll have the pH. So when the acid is strong, the calculation, the When an acid is strong, then the initial concentration of the acid is equal to the concentration of H3O+. Because remember, what I'm saying is that if I have a 2.3 molar solution, HClO4, so if I have a 2.3 three molar solution that's my initial concentration of HA right 2.3 molar well I know that there's going to be a change here minus X and plus X right so then at equilibrium I'll have X and X and 2.3 minus X well if this is a strong acid then I know that at equilibrium this is essentially equal to zero. So strong acids completely dissociate, which means that there is none of this left at equilibrium. It has completely turned into H plus and A minus, the conjugate base. So for strong acids, X equals the initial concentration of acid. So since this is 0, I know that x is 2.3, but you know what, we don't have to do any of this math. For a strong acid, the point is that I know, I already know what x is. x is equal to this initial concentration. So for a strong acid, we don't have to worry about this. Strong acids are easy. What's the pH of a 2.3 molar solution of any strong acid? Well, because it dissociates completely, and I know what the concentration of H3O plus is, then it's just 2.3 molar. All right, this is my initial concentration of HA. But it is also my concentration of H3O plus. So I just plug the same number in. So to solve for the pH of a strong acid, it's very easy. I just have to plug in this initial con concentration, 2.3 equals negative 0 0.36. So it's a strong acid, 2.3 molar, fairly concentrated, so the pH is negative 0 0.36. So remember, the pH scale can go below 0 and above 14. It's, it can generally go from negative 1.7 to 15.7. So this is within that an acceptable pH range. And again, this is not just for HClO4. Anytime I can identify this as a strong acid, then all I have to do is plug this number into this equation and solve for pH. Strong acids are easy. Let's do a strong base. Okay, what is the pH of a 4.9 milligram per liter barium hydroxide solution? All right, so ask ourselves the same first questions. One. Is this an acid or a base? Two, is this strong or weak? So, acid or base? This one is a base because it has OH. Strong or weak? Strong because it has OH. All right, so we know that we have a strong base, so we can calculate the pH as the negative log of H3O plus. 
But when I have a base, I'm not necessarily going to be producing H3O plus. I'm going to produ be producing OH minus, OH minus. So for bases, this is for acids. For bases, it's generally easier to calculate the pOH, which is the negative log of the OH minus concentration. So then, if I calculate the pOH because it's easier for bases, because I just have to find the OH minus concentration, I just can't plug that number in for the answer because the answer is still asking for the pH. I calculate the whether I'm talking about acids or bases, I usually talk about measuring this, the acidity or basicity of a solution is almost always reported in pH units for acids or for bases. For acids, it's easy to calculate pH because they have H3O plus. For bases, it takes one extra step because I actually have OH minus instead. But remember, we also have another equation that says 14 equals pH plus pOH. So what that means is that if I know the pOH, then if I plug it into this equation, I can solve for the pH. Because pH just equals pOH minus 14. It's not right. So the pH just equals 14 minus P O H. So I can calculate the pH for a base by first calculating the pOH by first getting the concentration of OH minus. So let's find the concentration of OH minus. Okay, so when we have a solution of barium hydroxide, it's going to dissociate and it will make one ion of barium, two plus, and two ions, this is supposed to be a two down here, two ions of hydroxide, OH minus. So if I start with this 4.9 milligrams per liter, and we have zero and zero, then uh, this at equilibrium, I'll have a bit less of this as it dissociates, and I'll have more of this, and I'll have plus 2x here. So remember that for strong acids and strong bases, I know that at equilibrium, this is actually zero. Because that's what a strong acid and a strong base does. I start off with some amount of this stuff, and then it completely falls apart so that at equilibrium I have 100% or very very close to 100% product and almost 0% reactant. So we can say that this is essentially 0. So I know that if this is 0 then X equals 4.9 milligrams per liter. And my hydroxide concentration is going to be 2 times 4.9 milligrams per liter because I have two hydroxides in this barium hydroxide compound. So um, whenever we're plugging in concentration values, and I'm trying to plug something into uh, an equation that has brackets like this, it's always calling for a concentration that's in molarity, moles per liter. So I'm given milligrams per liter here, but I can't plug 4.9 or 2 times 4.9 into this um, in, in for the concentration of OH minus. It has to be in molar. So the first thing we have to do is convert 4.9 milligrams per liter to moles per liter. So we're going to go from milligrams to grams, from grams to moles. There are 1,000 milligrams in a gram, and barium hydroxide is 171.34 grams per mole. 171.34 grams per mole. So let's plug this in. Four point nine divided by one thousand divided by one seventy one point three four 
equals 2.86 times 10 to the negative fifth moles per liter, molar. Because right, milligrams and milligrams cancel, grams and grams cancel, and I'm left with moles over liter, moles per liter. So 4.9 milligrams per liter equals 2.86 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. So x equals 2.86 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. So the concentration of OH minus equals 2 times x, 2 times 286 times 10 to the minus 5th molar. Seven one nine times ten to the minus fifth molar. All right, so now after all that, we finally have the concentration of OH minus. So if I have the concentration of OH minus, then I can plug it in right up here into this equation and calculate the POH. So I'll put 5.719 times 10 to the negative fifth in here. So my POH is 4.24. 4.24. And then to calculate the pH, I just rearrange this equation. 14 minus 4.24. So the pH equals So for this question, um, we always answer whether it's an acid or a base first and whether it's strong or weak. If it's strong, it's easy for me to determine what x is. Because whether it's an acid or a base, if it's strong, x is equal to this. Because if it's strong, at equilibrium, this is always going to be 0. So if I start with this much acid and it's strong, then at equilibrium it will be zero. If I start with this much base and it's strong, at equilibrium it will be zero. So calculating x for a strong acid or base is easy. It's just equal to this. Sometimes um, if I have two equivalents of OH, I'm going to have to multiply by two. But for the most part, calculating x is easy. I can set up this ice table, but I don't have to do a quadratic. I'm not, I don't have to even look at an equilibrium expression and try to solve for x x is just known because I know that this is 0, with, if it's strong or weak. Excuse me, if it's, strong, if it's a strong acid or a strong base. But if it's weak, I have to do something completely different. So let's now solve for the pH of a weak acid. <coughs> 